Yo, what's going on, guys? My name is Tafari, and this is my recap and review for Prison Break Episode 6, Season 5. And the, the title is Faisha. I have to say it like that because I even I keep forgetting. I keep saying Faisha or some shit like that. Faisha. Faisha. That's how Omar said it in, in, in the early on. And uh, one of the most interesting things I wanted to talk about is the character development between Van Gogh, who is the male uh, kind of triggerman that kind of helps out Poseidon, does all Poseidon's dirty work. The man's name is Van Gogh and the girl's name is A.W. Early on in this episode, A.W. and Van Gogh get bailed out of, out of jail and shit. And uh, fucking uh, they go into the car and they have this conversation where they're they're seeing the telecast or whatever where fucking Ramal was killed. My, my savior, Ramal, Abu Ramal. I can't believe they kill him. You know, and Abu Ramal is dead, right? And so they're like, Van Gogh says to A.W., so he killed Ramal. I thought they were allies. Right. And so fucking what she said is, what does it matter? Right. Now we have our, our job is to kill Kenya Loudis. Right. And so to me, what that signifies. Right. She's telling him pretty much shut the fuck up. You don't ask questions. You know what I mean? We just do what we're ordered to do. And another thing he said is maybe we should ask questions. You know, pretty interesting. Uh, it seems like Van Gogh, he's really moved. I think he was moved by the words of Kellerman a couple episodes back. Um, this is really interesting to me. I love seeing like character development in this way you can see the gears turning he's starting to feel like maybe these are things these are things that we should not be doing uh pretty interesting stuff right there so moving on into the episode uh lincoln goes to meet up with omar as a matter of fact the whole crew goes to meet up meet up with omar and i remember last episode i was like well uh, uh, uh omar does, you know he, he hasn't showed himself to not be a trustworthy person he's just he's just trying to make money man he's just trying to you know, do a deal or whatever. He's just a businessman is what I said, right? Fuck all that, man. Omar's dirty scum, son, and he kind of got what was coming to him in this episode. But early on in the episode, they come to Omar thinking he's a straight up, up dude. And see, I probably would have got killed by Omar because I was trusting him. Luckily, Lincoln never trusted him, and he always had his eye out for him to fuck up, right? And so they leave They leave Whip with, with Omar, and I kind of thought that was a good move. Whip has really been showing himself to be a fucking skilled agent. You know what I mean? Like, he legit should be a 21 void dude. He's amazing. And he does a crazy feat in this episode. Uh, we might have to power scale fucking whip because that motherfucker is doing amazing feats right now. But anyway, uh, so long story short, Omar betrays them. He tells them to go pick up a car and they can use that car to follow him to Faisha, right? And so they go to the car and fucking, of course, it's an ISIL trap. ISIL comes in with their AKs and AK, right now in the story, like, I don't even know who's worse. Like, the AKs are kind of like the antagonist of this story, man. Because every episode we're running from AKs and people are getting killed by AKs. A couple episodes back, I forgot to talk about Sid's death. There's been a lot of character deaths, man. Like, I don't know. Moment of silence for fucking Sid. Fucking Mufasa. That other honorable, um, whatever his fucking name was. You know, the honorable guard that died in there, man. Uh, moment of silence for the Christian dude, even though nobody fucking liked that guy. Uh, yo, we, we're losing motherfuckers left and fucking right. It's craziness. Um, and in this episode, we lose Omar. So, moment of silence. That's, you know, all my people, you know, he was killing my people. You, you this fucking can you allow this, you know? Um, but it was crazy. So, um, after they escape the trap, they come back and they see that, uh, they came back way faster than they, than fucking Omar was expecting. Like they, he had got fucking whip tied up and shit and fucking these dudes start rolling up on him. Lincoln gets over to his ass, starts, starts going, no, he didn't even go in on him. Fucking whip gets untied and whip starts going in on him. So like, what? Oh, you gonna cut, you gonna cock me? Boom, boom. Yo, whip was going in on that boy. Right. And so finally Omar submits and he's like, listen, I'll take you, I'll take you to Faisha. Right. Um, and so finally they get him on their side by punch him in the eye a couple times. Right. Um, motherfuckers, eyes get fucked up in this show. OK, I'll tell you more about it. So they head out to Faisha and uh, Faisha and fucking we cut back to A.W. and Van Gogh. And these motherfuckers are setting up a main nasty trap. Uh, they're leaning on their friends in the NSA, I believe. Um, and there's some bitch in the NSA. I guess her and uh, A.W. go way back like cook crack and fucking, I guess, uh, all the, all, all A.W. has to do is come in and fucking shake her tail feather and, and, and fucking say that she's going to give her some sex this weekend and she can get fucking 
access to fucking American surveillance and shit, like, over these people, like, she, they legit fly a drone over there, and, like, they're looking down on these motherfuckers, and then Van Gogh, he turns, and he gets his cell phone out, and he, he legit calls one of the ISIL, like, leaders, you know what I mean, one of the boys, you know, he, one of the ones that, that was sad about the, um, Buddha Ramal, you know, one of my boys, right, how about, you know, he was so upset, he's like, hello, right, wait a minute, you, you, U.S. government, why should I trust you, you know, and then Van Gogh says that we have a mutual, um, fucking understanding that these motherfuckers have to die, so he tells them, you know, using the drone information that they get from the NSA, he tells this group of ISIL goons where fucking Michael and the team are, meanwhile, Michael is devising something, he says that I've been under, uh, fucking Poseidon's thumb for too long, it's time to get out from under it, he goes inside and he uses a computer and he messages somebody, right, not even messages, he's legit having, like, almost a FaceTime with somebody, but he can't see that dude's face, but, but we can hear his voice, right, so we can't see the guy's face, but we can hear his voice, right, and that becomes a big deal, um, Michael hears the commotion that's going on outside as the, as the ISIL dudes start to roll up, and he says he has to go, but tells him to take screen capture, right, screen capture, and when he tells him to take screen capture, Michael, like, lifts up his hands, and he, and pretty much, almost like making sure that he takes a picture of the eyeballs dude like for episodes now i've been saying what the fuck did the eyeballs mean right we don't know we don't know what the eyeballs mean yet but we're trying to figure it out Uh, maybe there's something in there like if you remember in prison break episode i don't even fucking know back in the old days he cut open part of his fucking tattoo and there was like that pill that can make you convulse and he gave that to to lincoln to get him into the infirmary on the day that they were supposed to break out Obviously, shit didn't go down correctly, but it was a great, great idea. So, who knows? Maybe it's something similar? I don't fucking know. They've already broken out, but this breakout is a country breakout. We need to escape the country. We need to get back home. Um, Even though, I don't know if Michael knows, but there's a war on two fronts right now. So, anyway, um, supposedly, whatever Michael was doing and communicating with that guy, this is supposed to be a way for him to get out from ISIL, uh, not ISIL, fucking uh, Poseidon's thumb. And meanwhile, uh... Poseidon and the goons, well, not Poseidon, but, you know, the 21 Void dudes, they're fucking watching from the drone, they they see that he's inside, they see these dudes are outside, and then they see the ISIL goons roll up on them, now, the woman that wanted the sex from AW, she, she's still kind of like a good person, right, so, she's not really trying to do blackout missions and shit, so, she sees these ISIL goons, goons roll up on them, and she gets suspicious to the point where she's like, listen, you guys got to go. All right. You motherfuckers, you motherfuckers engineered, in, engineered this somehow. Right. She got wise quick. I'm surprised they're leaving her alive. I guess they're leaving her alive because A.W. has some feelings for her. A.W. legit said some shit like, well, we're not going to kill her. You know, even though she kicked them out and pretty much says, I- I'll blow the whistle right now if you don't get the fuck out. Um, pretty interesting stuff right there. Right. Like some character development. Is there somebody A.W. cares about? That, that bitch was ruthless. Um. So, in order to escape these ISIL goons, another feat, um, amazing feat by Whip, he fucking pulls the gun out, he's like, he's got, like, it was uh, Omar's gun, and it only had one bullet in it, and I love the line that Omar said, Omar says, like, Whip asks Omar, he says, um, why fucking have a gun with one bullet, and he's like, you only need one bullet, what do he say, wait, wait, let me think, let me think, he says, who carries, no, Whip says, who carries a gun with one bullet, and Omar said, a man who'd rather die than be caught by ISIL. And then he immediately gets, like, shot up by ISIL. Um, so Omar pretty much dies from that encounter. Um, so rest in peace, Omar, dude. Um, but anyway, fucking uh, Whip uses the one bullet to blow up some fucking gas tank that was dumb far away. And it was a fucking pistol. If you played Call of Duty, you know this is, like, a, a, an impossible shot right now. And it, he, yo, it was one shot, 45 dead. Like, not even, like, not really 45, but mad dudes dead. And if I were to re- rewind time a little bit, before these ISIL dudes went to roll up, fucking Cyclops was there. They had cut Cyclops loose. Cyclops, who'd heard the phone call, and he's like, I'm coming. You know, and they're like, no, you're not coming. He touches them, like, you know, fucking, uh, they're mad intimate. They be touching them right in the face and shit. Like, this is not your fight anymore, you know? Because they cut them loose from fucking Sid's dead body. Remember, I don't know. Well, I didn't talk about it, but um, fucking they had handcuffed Cyclops to Sid. So Cyclops is following in his own fucking car. Cyclops, yo, you got to give that man credit. Homie don't fucking quit, bro. He keeps coming back for more, but he ain't come. I don't think he's coming back this time. Um, 
And uh, so, yeah, Whip uses that one bullet, blows up all these ISIL dudes. The only one who survives is Cyclops, who's a little bit down the road. They see Cy Cyclops coming, so they get in their jeeps and they take off. Um, meanwhile, Michael has told this random mystery person to take a screenshot. And I think we actually meet the mystery person at the end of the episode. Some dude dressed up like Elvis living in a fucking mansion. Craziness, right? Um, so anyway, back to present, uh, what's happening right now. So they're pretty much running from fucking uh cyclops but they're leaving a track for him through the desert they know that Fe um faisha is across the desert but their map to faisha is gone fucking uh omar's dead so the plan is to fucking allow is to you know fucking fill the one car up with most of the gas and then v, v off in two different directions so that cyclops has to choose which one and so Michael does this trick to make sure that he's the one that is to distract Cyclops, right? By telling everybody there's a, there's a white pebble in his hand and there's also red pebbles. And whoever gets the white pebble fucking has to be the one to distract. Meanwhile, there's no fucking white pebble. He had just planned to fucking be the one always but he didn't want nobody to feel like well man i'm not gonna allow you to do that man i'm not i'm not gonna let you do that man you're, you're my lo you're my homie man you're my lover almost said oh that's homo though but hey man look, look i heard i heard wentworth is is you know he's he's gay and, and like i respect that man i'm hyped with it you know it's a new world man i'm not mad at him you know what i mean that's what's up anyway so fucking the plan works uh cyclops follows Michael through the desert, right? Michael starts to run out of gas. He comes up, he comes up with a plan to get this dude to get out of his car to check his car. He like puts a rock on the gas pedal and like hides behind a little mountain. And uh, while he's hiding behind, the, while he's behind the not behind the mountain, fucking Cyclops. I must have said Omar, but whatever. Cyclops gets out the car. He goes and inspects the other car. Fucking, there's nothing in there. Michael jumps into his car and he tries to take off, but. It, it was almost like it was stuck in the, in the mud or something. There was no mud. It's just sand. But for some reason, he couldn't just take off with it. And so Cyclops notices this. He turns around and he just AK sprays the car up. Sprays it. I thought Michael was going to get hit from this because we saw the previews. We know Michael's supposed to get really badly hurt um, to the point that Lincoln would say that he's dying. So anyway, that's not what happened, though. Fucking, uh, Michael escapes no bullets in him at all, and he ends up grabbing a fucking wrench, or not a wrench, a screwdriver from the dude's car, right? This screwdriver is, like, the main character now. Um, like, they even focused on it for a second. But anyway, fucking, so he hides, fucking Cyclops comes closer, and then they get into this tussle, right? I wanted to call it a fight, but it's more like a tussle. Like, fucking Michael... He's not that strong, bro. He, like, and this was a great scene because it was character development some more. We don't like we believe Michael's super smart, but it's hard to make it believable that he's an excellent fighter. You know what I mean? And he was not. He was not an excellent fighter. So it actually all played into the character so much. Um, fucking for a little bit, Cyclops was kind of whooping his ass. Not really whooping his ass, but holding his own. Right. Finally, Michael finds a way to reach for the screwdriver and stab homie in the fucking eye right the other fucking eye bro now he's legit done and i don't know if anybody saw my video about the connections between prison break and uh homer's odyssey yo that's that's a connection right there homie's name is canyon Audis. Audis is supposed to be nobody fucking odysseus told the cyclops that his name was nobody when he and then he stabbed him in the eye later on in the in the story um pretty interesting pretty fucking interesting so left him out in the in the fucking desert with his fucking screw in his eye. But, yo, your boy Cyclops wasn't going out like that. He fucking stabbed him with this piece of car or something. I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was dipped in fucking antifreeze, right? He, and he stabbed him with it, and I guess that's some type of poison, bro. Like, I'm, I didn't know that shit. I don't know shit, bro. I don't know shit. So anyway, fucking Michael's poisoned now by himself in the desert. The plan was that... He was going to follow Link's tracks. Link was going to leave tracks for him. And eventually after he lost um, this dude, he would follow the tracks. Now, for some reason, Michael's having a hard time finding these fucking tracks, right? And Lincoln and them were getting lost too. Finally, Ja, once again, he shows his awesome mind, right? Michael was lucky enough was lucky enough to make sure that Ja didn't get high before the trip so that Ja could legit help out when Michael wasn't around. And he really did. 
Michael, uh, Ja came up with this plan to follow the seagulls because he says seagulls have no interest in the desert, but they have interest in the water, right? And so they know that Faisha, Faisha must be, must be near the water. So they follow the seagulls. They make it to Faisha, and Faisha is almost like a fucking paradise compared to the shit that these guys have been through. There's a whole bunch of kids and nice people, and it just feels safe. You know, that's it's so interesting. You know, fucking 200 miles later, and there's safety. Man, it, it it's a it's a welcome change. It's a welcome change. I I like to see. I like seeing everybody in a peaceful state. Even though Lincoln is still kind of struck in with worry, he wants to get his brother out. That's the whole plan. That's why he's here. So, um, Michael, his car fucking shits on him. I mean, I think that's the result of getting AK sprayed, right? Um, the car shits on him, and Michael has to walk. So Michael's walking, but he don't know which way to go. He can't find the tracks. And that's when you see this really iconic scene that, that's in the intro of every episode of him just walking through the desert and collapsing, you know, although it's different. In the intro, they show it in the daytime, but actually he was collapsing like either dusk or at night. And pretty interesting, pretty, pretty sad, man. They, they really brought the emotion on, man. We, we feel the desperation. You don't know how Michael's going to make it out of this. But here we go, Ja, with another great idea. So... Omar might have had some good in him. He was bringing fireworks for, um, as kind of like payment for the boats and shit like that, that um, that the physici- the Phaeacians were going to supply. And so fucking uh, they use some of the fireworks to kind of show Michael where they are. And Michael comes up with enough strength to get pretty close. And then you hear the people like, oh, man from the, well, I don't know what the fuck. They, they said some shit in like Arabic or some shit, but I'm assuming it says man from Bafar or some shit, right? And fucking everyone sees like, oh man, it's Michael. So they go and get him and fucking Michael is able to utter out that like fucking Cyclops poisoned him with fucking antifreeze, right? And pretty much the episode ends there. I don't think I really missed anything else. The episode was a lot of running and chasing, kind of just like a last episode. But there was some deep moments, yo. There was a, there was also this moment where, um, yo, so there was also this moment where Sheba had called Lincoln, right? And, yo, she's pretty much like flirting with the dude, right? And fucking um, Lincoln's like, where's, uh, where's C-Note? Or, no, they call him... I don't know. He might have said C note. Maybe, maybe she understands that C note is um Benjamin, right? But anyway, fucking, she's like, uh, he's good, like, right? Like she, she was pretty much really like legit flirting with homie. And then homie was like, um, Lincoln was like, yo, when we get out of this, like, yo, I'm gonna buy you a drink. And it was cool. She was like, I don't drink, but uh, oh, what if I buy you a drink? Uh, you know, how about that? You catch me outside. How about that? You know, that type of shit. So that was cool. You know, some character development for those two, even though if if, if anyone's following the story as, t- as intently as I am, dude, Lincoln's supposed to be with some chick from Sp- from Spain or that they met in Panama. They they haven't really told that story at all. And I hope they haven't forgot that Lincoln's supposed to have a son named LJ because they haven't talked about LJ at all. And you would think at least Mike would ask about LJ just a teeny bit. I mean, it's been like seven years, right? So pretty interesting um that they never brought that up but hey what can you do man hey man you know they can't remember everything man i mean you would think he's just a major character they could remember him but fuck it fuck it i don't care fuck lj right he's a grown man he's a grown-ass man right but yo my name's tafari yo if you want to comment about it man hey man i want to talk to you about it man i'm tired of talking to my grandma she like hey baby you won't talk about prison break again i'm like no grandma Come on, I'm, I'm trying to get my subscribers to talk about Prison Break, man. I'm not even trying to talk about Prison Break. Like, baby, listen, listen. You don't got no damn subscribers, baby. Why don't you just let me talk to you about Prison Break? Listen, you know, I've seen it. And I'm thinking, you know, Michael got a widow's peak. You seen his hairline? Oh, my God. Like, mama, that ain't even what it's about, mama. I don't know if I said mama or grandmama. I don't know. Fuck my story up. But, yo, my name's Tafari, and I'm out.